Hello everyone, it's me, Alex Axe, and it is Thursday, December 14th. And um, hopefully you got over hump day okay and everything's going great. Like last night I got to hang out with friends and watch some movies and I'll talk about all that in a minute. The big thing that's going on today is that the FCC is having its totally theatrical vote for net neutrality, which I mean, honestly, I, I will just die of shock if it if Pie doesn't kill net neutrality because I think this is all just theater at this point. So I just finished calling my Congress critters to ask them to please legislatively enshrine net neutrality and you know, it's worth a try and also I needed to yell at Cory Gardner because I always need to yell at Cory Gardner for his like absolutely disingenuous like oh Doug Jones should caucus with the Republicans because that serves the, the will of the Alabama voters like fuck off man. First off, if he got elected, that obviously the Alabama voters, the majority went for the Democrat. And second off, like if you are actually interested in the po the popular will of the voters, Cory Gardner, you'd be caucusing with the Democrats or at the very least not giving Donald Trump everything he wants because Donald Trump is not liked in Colorado. So I just, I hate him so much. Like, I, I mean... I, I know at this point it's like, who, Donald Trump or Cory Gardner? The answer is yes, but I really just, Cory Gardner, I think it's a very specific thing. Like, he's not as horrible and damaging as Donald Trump, but I have, like, an extra little hate on for him because he's my state's problem and we can't get rid of him till 2020 and he's just so awful. Like, <laughs> I keep joking, the only thing... That, that saves me personally is that he got elected while I was living in Houston, so he's totally not my fault. <laughs> and so I just give crap to all, all of my friends who w were here at the time, and I'm like, look what you let happen. Like, I leave for three years, and we get fucking Cory Gardner in the Senate. Though, to be fair, I, I keep getting told, at the time, he didn't seem like he was this garbage. So, you know, he has, he has shown his, his true stripes. But, <laughs> anyway... Um, the other thing I want to mention is, I, uh, I got in an argument with someone in my, my friend's mentions on Twitter, and she was like, yo, could you just take me out of this, th this conversation, which I think is a perfectly reasonable request, and I was like, oh yeah, sure, sorry dude, and just, you know, go remove person from conversation, continue arguing, and the other person, like, popped up with, well, and this is how you mute a conversation, and I'm like, that seems really fucking rude, like, were the, the people having an argument in somebody's mentions, like, it's it's really not on her to, to mute this whole thing. We should be courteous and leave her out of it once she makes it clear she wants to be left out of it. You know, like, try not to have fights in other people's mentions. But, you know, internet courtesy. There you go. Um, also, I saw that, like, Disney is buying portions of Fox and I know everyone's been making jokes about yay Disney can make X-Men movies now da, 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 but uh you know <laughs> it's the last time America was building up monopolies and, and and all that it really wasn't great for regular people because if nothing else it's not good that you're having to hitch your career to a single large employer and I mean I'm sure like Disney is going to outlast the cockroaches in the nuclear war probably but it's still it's not good for workers because the fewer op options there are for other places you can go work especially as creatives it diminishes any power you have over negotiations and all that because basically they can just be like hey we're the only game in town you play by our rules or you get nothing and, you know, that's already something that, that creatives have enough problems with. So, you know, I, I, I'm glad if you're happy about who owns the rights to the X-Men, but this is like a major problem. And it's been really disturbing to see, you know, entertainment monopolies getting built. Like, I mean, would people be cheering for this shit if it was, if it was um, the bell system repeat, re uh, rebuilding itself into like some kind of cell phone giant because you know who gives a shit about landlines anymore so yeah that's just been kind of bothering me as somebody who is concerned with workers actually being able to have some modicum of power not that there's a whole lot especially with 
the weakening of unions and you can bet your ass that trying to unionize Disney would be like fucking impossible. So that's a little groomer than I was planning to go. Uh, last night I had a lot of fun. I hung out with some friends and I met someone's new kitty. His name is Milo and he's super tiny and so cute. He's this little black kitty so I don't have a good picture of him because you know it's like trying to take a picture of my black kitty where you get a blob, a black blob with green eyes and in this you get a tiny black blob with or not green eyes, yellow eyes. And this, you get a tiny black blob with yellow eyes. But he's very enthusiastic, and he's just, oh my god, he's the cutest thing. And other than, like, you get him in your lap, and the first thing he does is just, like, fart on you, and a cat fart is just... You think dog farts are bad. Like, holy shit, you have never encountered a cat fart. But that, that was just, like, oh, it was a great way to spend an evening, and we ate good food, and apparently it's, like, some kind of Swedish thing was going on yesterday where you're supposed to eat ginger snaps. So we had Swedish ginger snaps that Ivona got, my, my housemate who's Swedish, and ate them with Stilton, which, I mean, like, don't, you know, some people might be going like, oh, what the fuck, because, you know, it's cheese on a cookie, but oh my god, it's so good. It's like something with the, like, the sweet gingery thing mixed with that, that really, like, strong cheese. Oh my god, it's amazing. I super recommend it if you want to gain, like, 15 pounds. And, uh, we watched a couple of movies. We watched... A movie from like 2001 I want to say called Green Fingers which is this little British movie about um, prisoners in an open prison doing gardening and that was super cute and it had I want to say like Colin Farrell is that right I don't know um, and Helen Mirren in it and of course Helen Mirren is just a goddess in anything she's in and it was cute and you know people growing gardens and all the prisoners were just like way more adorable than murderers have any right to be but it was you know it's like a kind of feel-good movie and I enjoyed it and I you can get it on Amazon if you want to watch it and then the other one that we watched which was super good but I have like some kind of complicated feelings about it was Florence Foster Jenkins which I, I was it last year or the year before it came out I mean it's pretty new it's got Meryl Streep and once again like Meryl Streep is just so amazing in everything she does and she just like disappears into this role and you know, she's just an amazing actress. And Florence Foster Jen Jenkins was a real person back in the, like, the 20s to 40s was when she was kind of, like, big. And her whole story was, um, like, she got married, I guess, against her dad's will or something to this guy named, Do to some doctor named Jenkins, and he basically immediately gave her syphilis, <laughs> which back then, you know, they didn't know that penicillin, it was like, I think she got it before they discovered penicillin, and, you know, the disease progressed before they figured out that penicillin could actually cure syphilis. So then, like, her rich dad or uncle or whatever died, and she got, like, a, a trust fund, and, you know, she also got rid of that husband, and but kept the name kind of, like, as a lesson, and she'd been a really good piano player until like some nerve damage in her left hand made it so that she couldn't professionally play piano because she was basically headed on that track. But she, she had this like lifelong obsession with music and she was like a patron of music and contributed a lot to that. But along the way she became like a, an amateur soprano, like she desperately wanted to sing opera. And the whole thing was she was really bad. And kind of reading a little bit about her as a historical person like there's actually recordings of her singing and she's really freaking terrible but she became sort of like a cult like phenomenon sort of like um you know that the temporary flair of Rebecca Black's Friday I think is a similar thing and for the most part like she would do these singing recitals where she was wearing these fantastic costumes and all that and she'd do them for like the like her wealthy friends who would always just tell her that she was great and then she, finally like she did a concert that was open to the public in Carnegie Hall and people were pretty mean about it because she was terrible and then I, I, it was like five days after that she died and you know it could be like this kind of romantic thing about um like the shock of the bad reviews killed her or whatever and there is like this line that apparently I guess she did say that that is said in the movie by Meryl Streep and it's you know people can say that I can't sing but they can't say that I didn't sing so I have these really complicated feelings about this movie because on one hand it is kind of like this this story about this woman you know who who just loves singing even though she's just 
rotten at it and she does it anyway and of, of course there's some question of if she you know she's obviously not does not think that she is terrible she thinks that she's just great and some of that there's like some speculation that some of that even might be connected to the fact that she had really advanced syphilis and you know there was probably like nerve damage and healing hearing loss and maybe some like mental stuff going on there where she just couldn't realize what was going on so there's that like but it's still this kind of you know that whole like people said I can't may say I can't sing but they can't say I didn't sing like you know so in that way there's like this story kind of about your personal relationship with art and doing it anyway even if you're bad at it and being like well fuck the haters I'm gonna do it or doing what you believe in and not caring what other people have to say with it and so to that extent like that is kind of a cool message but the reason I have really complicated feelings about this is because a major thing that you see in this movie is like people just sort of yes manning her constantly and telling her she's good and some of it might be out of affection but to me it really seems like a lot of it is because she's really wealthy and she's a lot of people's meal ticket like you know donors and all that or people who are like patrons of the arts and all that tell her what she wants to hear because she's been you know doing a lot of funding stuff and like uh, there's a conductor who does her voice training and he doesn't tell her that she's terrible because she's basically his meal ticket her piano player McMoon um who is totally super straight in this movie. <laughs> just we are, he's adorable but um like every time you know y you can tell like he thinks she's absolutely terrible and he doesn't ever tell her that because she's his employer and his meal ticket. Uh, she has um, uh, Sinclair, who is played by Hugh Grant, he, who is nominally her husband, like they're married, but they live in separate apartments because, you know, it, it, it makes sense that, that she, like, she doesn't want to give him syphilis, so there you go. But he has a girlfriend that he lives with in that apartment that she's paying for, and he basically spends all of his time being like, oh no, Florence, you're wonderful, you're perfect, you're great, Bunny. He calls her Bunny. And it's this really creepy thing where you're like, I think he does care about her, but at the same time, there's this money where you're like, would you actually be putting up with any of this if she was not wealthy and she was not paying your way? So it has this real undertone that, that I found very discomforting. And I mean, it's it, like the movie is mostly, it's, it's very much presented as, as a comedy because it's about like this rich woman who can't fucking sing and everyone just tells her she can do it anyway. But you know, I, I got a, I came out of just going, this is a story that literally could not happen if she wasn't rich because like, I'm sorry, when you're a poor person, you suck at what you're trying to do. People are happy to tell you that you suck. Even when you don't suck, they're happy to tell you that you suck. And so it's like when you get to the end and like people are kind of laughing at her in the big Carnegie Hall concert, you're also just like, well, she's singing her heart out. Cause actually they, there's a character that stands up and do that. And I don't know if that's historically accurate. That's like, you know, you need to cheer for her cause she's singing her heart out and that's the important part. But it's just like, you know, I guess it, it's that whole like rich people have like different rules and they can get away with different things and people are willing to support them and tell them what they want to hear just because of the money. And to a certain extent, it also makes me feel really bad for her because it's like, you know, no one was willing to be honest with you because of your money, which is also like a really icky thing. So it's, it's really like really, really complex for, for something that's basically a comedy. And, and it has all this underlying che really chewy stuff that, that is like, you know, very problematic. Cause also, I mean, of course, obviously she's, she's a rich white lady and, and basically everyone in the movie is <laughs> like a rich, or basically everyone in the movie is white but you know that also kind of I guess makes sense I don't know so if, if you've seen that movie like tell me your thoughts about it or give it a shot because it is actually a good movie but just be prepared maybe to feel disturbed like me about all this stuff like you know this this pity love of of a guy you know being married but not really to this rich lady and you know it's like well, is she happy? Well, I, I guess it's because she's got money, but does she have any real friends? Does she realize she doesn't have any real friends? I don't know. So it's just, 
it's it's a really interesting movie in that regard. And wow, I've been going on about this for a while, so I'm going to call it good. Have a great Thursday, and I will talk to you tomorrow.